Howdy, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. It's Luke here with Luke A. Shoots. And I just got back from an amazing cruise with my family and came home, wanted to go to the range, do some practice with uh, my carry pistol and my competition pistol. And I just got home and I just grabbed my range bag from the garage, put it in the truck, went to the range, came back, and I just thought I'd show you guys what's in my range bag. Kind of curious myself. I, I did not stage this. I literally just grabbed this thing out of the truck and brought it upstairs here and thought I'd make a video. Turn the lights on, the pretty camera, all that stuff, and thought I'd make a video for you guys. So this is my range bag right here. This is a 511, I believe it's the patrol officer's bag. It's not meant to be a range bag and they have a whole range bag system and it's cool. I got a lot of friends that have that bag. It's cool bag, it's just not really for me. So first off is the dimensions of this bag work for me. The taller bag, a little bit thinner, that stands straight up. It works, it just kind of works for me. It fits in my cart when I go to matches and I just like this size bag. It's replacing, I'll throw a photo of it up here, this Oakley range bag that was my favorite bag ever. And I no longer have one and a couple of my other friends still have one and Every time I see it, I'm just like, hey man, you, if you're ever done with that thing, I'll buy it off you. I've looked for them on eBay, everything. Oakley made this awesome range bag, but this 5.11 bag fit the bill. Pretty much the same dimensions. Missing a couple small little pockets the Oakley bag had, but this thing is awesome for me and it makes do. So it is the 5.11. Um, I'll try to find the name for it and put a link in it in the description, but it's a 5.11. I believe it's the patrol officer's bag. So that's what the bag is itself. So first and foremost, before I get started on the bag, I'm gonna talk a little bit about range attire and what I like to wear. Now I'm here in Southern California. It's crazy hot out here and the sun is always out and I used to actually buy like sunblock made for paddle boarders and put it all over my face and my ears and everything and it was like this white, white zinc when I would go to the range, especially for match days. And what I started wearing now is these sun shirts which I discovered from, you know, fishing and you can kind of buy these anywhere. They're really cheap. Do not buy like the $95 ones. They've got a lot of trick ones out there. I actually have a Sims one that cost me a bit more money and it's it's great. But I also have like $15 ones I got from Spear America and they're great too. So I like wearing these sun shirts. I'll actually put this over my head with my hat on, put my ears over this and it seems like it would be hot but it's actually not. It keeps me a lot cooler. Uh, as far as range pants, I am wearing uh, a pair of First Light uh, hunting pants right now. And that's what I, I normally wear. I really love these First Light pants. All the First Light pants are amazing. First Light's an unbelievable company, and I encourage you to check them out. But outside of that, shoes. Now, I don't wear like a Solomon style shoe all the time. Um, I've, I've had them all kind of a shoe nerd, uh, low key like. Um, sneaker head here but uh, I I wear cleats and I like wearing cleats this is a Nike football cleat right here and I wear these in matches I wear them when I'm at the range just practicing when I'm in dirt I want to be in these and I'm sorry but the the boots just don't work for me I just don't have the traction maybe it's just the dirt here in California but um, we're kind of there's always it's it's a hard surface dirt with like a loose kind of gravel over top of it and I just watch my friends slipping and sliding in their Cool Kid Solomons all day long. These, I don't have that problem. To the point where you kind of got to get used to them when you first start wearing them because of how much traction you have. But if you don't have a pair of cleats, it's they're like 35 bucks. Buy a pair, give them a try, and I think you'll really enjoy them, especially in the dirt or grass or, or whatever type of medium your, uh, your range is in. If you're in the sand, I, I, I have nothing for you. I'm sorry about that. So let's get started on the bag here. Uh, I'm gonna start from the outside here. Again, I did not stage this, so I don't know what's in here. On this left side here is a checkbook. My checkbook is here because a lot of the matches I go to, you have to pay cash or check. So I always have a checkbook on the outside here to be able to pay my match fees. On this side, I have absolutely nothing, but this is kind of a good side here to throw a water bottle or something like that. Uh, it's not where I put water, but you could put water in there. Inside of here, let's see what I got. 
reaching in here. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of batteries, like a ton of batteries for my optic. My carry optic gun is a Shadow 2, and this is it has a Delta Point Pro 2 on top of it, and it takes these CR2032 batteries I buy on Amazon. I just keep a ton of them in here. So that's what's in here. Always have little, these little Surefire Ear Pros right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see them there, but these Surefire Ear Pros are amazing. They're fantastic. I use them for kind of everything. I used to use them as an earpiece with my radio as well. So I've always got those things kind of shoved in here and all over the place. Couple tabs of Advil, and then these little lens wipes right here. I use these lens wipes for my optics primarily. So it's cleaning off my delta point or if I'm running uh, a rifle that day and I need to clean that off, I've always got something. And then this is an Oakley uh, optics kit as well. It's, it's basically their little little thing of a cleaner, cleaning solution and a wrap. So that's what's in the front pocket of this here. On this side of the pocket, it looks like this is where I keep, usually I'm keeping most of my ear pro. So the ear pro I like to use is these 3M Peltors right here. These are battery powered uh, ear uh, hearing protection. So there's those right there. These things are awesome. <laughs> I love these. Somebody gave me this pair of autos, I think because they were broken and they, they sealed them up there in the back. But these autos, I mean, they, they work, they get the job done, they're okay. I don't like them near as much as I like the Peltors. I'm actually missing one here. Hmm, that stinks, but it's rare I have to go to these. Usually on the side here, I'm keeping a set of um, MSA Sordans as well. That's usually all my hearing pros on this side. On the other side here, I have not one, but two Pocket Pro 2 shot timers. Now. This one, it, it broke off recently. I used to have a small clip here that I kind of jerry-rigged to go onto my competition belt, um, but that has recently broke off. I need to make another one because this clip here had broken. I've had this Pocket Pro 2 here for, oh man, maybe like 12 or 15 years. And I always have a second one on backup as well. And do I have one in here? No, oh, here's the clip right here that I use to clip it to my Safari Land belt. So this thing would usually kind of go in here and clip to the belt, but maybe I'll do a whole video of my Safari Land rig and show that to you guys someday. Uh, and I usually have a nine volt shoved on this side as well. Why do I have two timers? Uh, it's because I have two timers. I don't think you need two timers, but I just have two in here. Uh, I think I bought one, lost it, bought another one, and then found the other one, and now I have two timers. So. Competition Electronics Pocket Pro 2. I cannot recommend this, this model and brand enough. I've used all the other ones. This one's just the easiest to set up. Easiest to set up par times, all those things. Things I need when, uh, when training and at a match as well because sometimes you have something uh, called Virginia count. So you have to be able to look back at how many shots were fired. So this thing's just really simple. I've seen all the other ones. I don't like them. I would have bought one of those if I liked them. I have two of these and because and, and it's, it's the one I like. So here in this top lid, you can see I've got a nice, nice, large, organized, organization kind of lid type thing here we got going on. Again, I don't know what's in here, so I'm going to find out with you guys. I kind of have an idea though. This should be all my ear pro and a couple specific tools. Yeah. So this is just a bunch of extra ear pro from Surefire, the Surefire Hearing Pro. These are the batteries, the EBR1225s. These are the batteries for my older Acro. Uh, my Aimpoint Acro that was on my pistol. Now I have an Acro 2, totally different battery. And then I've just got a couple small tools here. This is the tool for the Safari Land setup. And then a couple spare, uh, spare pieces of hearing protection from Surefire. In this pen pouch, I always have a Sharpie right here. And then right here, this is my squib rod. This is a squib rod. If you don't know what a squib rod is, a squib rod is a rod that you use when you have a squib, especially for those of you who reload, you already know what I'm talking about. But 
For you factory ammo guys, you probably don't know because your ammo always goes bang, but every once in a while when reloading, I reload a lot of my own ammo. Not all of it, but a large majority of it. I'd say maybe 30% of the ammo I shoot, especially in matches, it's probably closer to 90%. Uh, I am reloading my own ammo. And every once in a while, you get one of those rounds that doesn't have powder in it and the bullet doesn't make it all the way down the barrel and that's called a squib. And you need a small rod like this to just kind of bang it out. So you put this in the barrel, hit it with a hammer and work that, work that bullet out. Ralph Arredondo of Arredondo, uh, I think his company's called Arredondo Precisions, um, created this. He's a plastic guru. Uh, you OG military guys probably know what Arredondo base pads are because they were the bomb back in the day. They were the heat. I still got a bunch of those Glock base pads, but uh, Ralph is a hardcore competitor, amazing grandmaster shooter. And he makes not a lot of nice little products like this that, that we all use. <clears throat> Coming in here, I've got a large red Sharpie. Uh, I use this sometimes for zeroing and things like that, but just always kind of nice to have a big red Sharpie. And then here, I have my chalk. So this is the type of chalk I use. This is the Pistol Pro Grip Chalk. Now, I have a spray one. This is kind of what I'll use at practice. I just bought the spray to see if I would like it as much. I don't, I like just the normal chalk. And the way we use that is put it on our hands, gets rid of the moisture on our hands, especially on those hot days in a match. And a lot of guys are like, oh, it's not training for battle. I'm not training for battle, dude, I'm in a competition. I'm trying to shoot as fast as humanly possible and win and stuff like that. Um, and I'm, I'm learning how to shoot fast, that's why I compete. Uh, nice little, Kind of optics cleaner here from Trigicon on this zipper. Go into this next pouch here, and I believe it should be some sunglasses. And a little bit of cash. A little bit of cash because there's a dude there. Sells like the jerky sticks and the hot dogs. So I always have a little bit of cash in here to buy some of those. And a uh, pair of sunglasses. I don't really use these anymore. These, this is a pair of Rokas. I used to shoot for Roka. And I just uh, I found out they weren't actually rated for protection. So I stopped wearing them. It's just kind of a spare set of sunglasses that lives in this bag now. <clears throat> All right, getting into the main pouch. I'm trying to show this to you guys. You can kind of see how it's all laid out in there. It's it's sectioned off into three dividers, which I like, one kind of longer one, and then one that's about, you know, maybe 60% maybe of the bag, and then another smaller pouch. So I will start from the front here. This These are my favorite sunglasses to wear at the range, and they also make me kind of look like a, a weirdo like, yeah, buddy. Jerry Mitchell called, he wants his sunglasses back. These, <laughs> these sunglasses are amazing. They're called Montana Golds, and they don't look like much, but they actually are a transition lens, so it goes from this amber into a darker lens. Um, they're the best sunglasses I've ever used. My friend, Zach Smith, uh, he's like the PCC freaking savage stud. He gave these to me. And because he didn't want to wear them because he thought he looked like a creeper in them. Because he does. Just like we all look like creepers in these. I mean, these, they look like, do I look like, I'm just like, hey, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I, I can't wear these out and about. Every time I put them on, my friends just look at me and smile and laugh. So that's in there. Uh, my set of ears. This, this is my main set of hearing pro here. These are the MSA Sordon Pro X. Pro X Sordon. Um, with the Woodland Camo, I, I don't know. I, I love these ears. I've used everything. These are my favorite ones, especially for the price. The price is not too bad. I believe I have these in my Amazon store and uh, all proceeds go to Samaritan's Purse, SamaritansPurse.com. So check them out. But this is my favorite set of electronic hearing. There, I mean, I don't really know what to say about them. I, you know, I could do a whole in-depth review and show you DBs and stuff, but these are just the most comfortable ones. They got this like amazing little gel pad inside. Um, they're just really snuggly wuggly and they don't sit too low or too high. They're just, it's a great set of ears for not a lot of money compared to the competition out there. Um, if you're spending $500 on ears, cool, that's great. Whatever you have to do to protect your ears, but. I have not done that. I have no idea where I got this, but this is what I usually keep my match ammo in because at least in 40 cal, it comes out to right at about 220 rounds, which is all I need for a day of shooting. 
uh, especially at a match. I'm usually never going over 220 or 250 rounds in a match. Even on a large match day, those big matches have, you know, 15 to 20 stages, but you're doing that over the course of many days. So, and a lot of those stages are like, some of them are like eight round stages, but then some are 30 round stages. So this little hard thing, my buddy Chris from 511 gave it to me. It's not a 511 product. I don't know who makes it. Uh, let me see if I can see on here. It, it, it doesn't say who makes it. Um, oh, here we go. G-Code. G-Code makes these. Tacticalholsters.com. Uh, check, check out G-Code. They make my favorite uh, inside the waistband holster, the Incog. But they don't make it for the gun I carry anymore, so I don't have one. But This is a small little Bluetooth speaker that I always think I'm going to use and I just never do because the crew I, I shoot with a lot, there's a husband and wife. They're both amazing shooters. They've always got some dope music going from like Michael Jackson to Led Zeppelin to, you know, Prince to Metallica. So I kind of let them take care of the music, but I always think I'm going to use this and I never really do, but it's a little Bluetooth speaker. This is a 5.11 case I stole from a 5.11 bag that they gave me to check out. And I just really liked this, this little bag, this little case right here. It zips on the top here. And uh, in here, I have kind of a spare parts kit. So I've got a bunch of little spare parts in there. Some, uh, uh, what are these things called? Some fiber optics and takedown pins and extractors, ejectors, all that kind of stuff sort of lives in this. And then also in this, I have just a whole bunch of uh, springs, of recoil springs. Some spares in here. There's some for my 2011 in here because with the 2011, I'm always always messing with springs. I can't seem to kind of settle on one, but right now I'm running a 13 pound spring with two coils cut out of it. I, it, it feels great for now, but every spring's different. So I've always got a whole bunch of springs on me. I don't get too crazy into the spring thing, but whoop, some fiber optic towel. I always just have like a random rag or towel on me to wipe my hands off or wipe the gun off. If I need to clean the gun, uh, I'll just use this regular white towel. Always use white because you can bleach it. Extra set of ears. Normally these aren't in here, but they're in here today because uh, I took these out of my truck. This is the pair that usually just lives in my pickup truck. On the side here, this is my competitive dynamics tool bag. Now, I've had this thing a very long time. I had one for literally like 15 years and then I had my Oakley bag RIP Oakley bag, get stolen. And I replaced it with another of the same bag because I couldn't find anything I liked more. But this, this competitive edge dynamics bag, it's got kind of a rubber coating inside. This is where I keep tools, oil, um, lube, all my lube, stuff like that is in here. So in here, I've got a set of Go Juice from Geisley. I thought I would like this, I don't. It's just in here right now. My favorite lube for a gun is this stuff. It's called Blue Magic Oil. Blue Magic Oil. Now, you can get this from alphatechcoatings.com. Alphatechcoatings.com. I, I don't even know what to... It's the best lube on the planet. Just go spend like 20 bucks on a bottle of this. Don't use a lot of it. Just use like a drop on your 2011 and like half a drop on your Glock. This is my favorite lube. Uh, in here, I've got one of these little uh, screwdrivers, kind of a multi-tool screwdriver. I've got a set of toothbrushes in here. I, I use these a lot for cleaning. I always have one of these little brass and rubber uh, mallets. Um, this gets used a ton too. Oh, I've got... M Pro 7, like this stuff for cleaning, especially ARs. And then let's see, I have the rest of the tools in here. I have a small Allen key set right here. I have the aim point tool. I've got this little, uh, little scraper right here I like to use, a little scraper. And then I've got a punch. I've got kind of another dowel punch type thing. I can't. 
people are like, what's that in there for? And it's like, I, I can't specifically tell you what it's in here for, but I use this stupid thing all the time just to punch out a little pin or something like that. I know I can get, I have a whole punch set right here. Whoop, had. Whole punch set right here. And uh, I, I, a lot of times I end up just kind of grabbing that little, that little random punch and using that. But I have a set of punches here and then another rod I can use to, it's more of a brass rod I can use for punching out a squib if I need to. So that is what's in my little tool bag and that thing lives right there in my bag. <clears throat> now, moving on to the main pocket. To carry my pistols in and out because this bag just stays the same and then the pistols are more specific. I like two bags. Here are the two bags I use. I like this 511 pistol case right here. This 511 case is awesome. You can open it up and you see you actually have room for two weapons there. I usually don't put two in there. I'll just put one. So as it's set up now, it's set up just for a Glock, but I could put two pistols in here if I wanted to. Uh, usually on the other side, I'll throw like random little spare parts or magazines, which in here I've got a bunch more Glock mags. So I like having a bag specific for each weapon. So this is my Glock 19 bag. This bag right here is set up for my Shadow 2. This is my other favorite pistol pouch from Dylan Precision. Again, you reloaders will know who these guys are. You probably get that blue press and like check out those girls and stuff like that. But uh, Dylan Precision bag, I, I have a ton of these. And this was my kind of go-to because I had a nice large storage pouch here. I could put accoutrements for that pistol specifically. And then on the back, I could carry up to four magazines in that pistol pouch. And then in here, I have my, all right, my Shadow 2. So my Shadow 2 is in here. And that's what I took to the range today along with my PO7. Now, magazines. I had some AR ammo in here because I wanted to zero my work rifle today. But uh, I carry all my magazines. Before I go to the range, I load all the magazines and I throw them in these DACA pouches. And the DACA pouch is labeled, this one I believe is CZ mags. Yeah, should be. Yeah, CZ mags. So these are all my practice CZ mags. Now I have a whole nother pouch with just the magazines I use in a match. Uh, you don't need that. It's just kind of something I have. I have like these seven mags that I only use in a match. But these practice mags I can just kind of beat up and I have a ton of them in here. And what I do is I load this the night before while I'm sitting down watching TV or hanging with the wife or the kid or whatever. And I just sit down and load all the mags. So when I get to the range, I'm not sitting there spending the first 30 minutes of my range time punching mags. So I show up with one of these fully loaded, ready to go. I have another pouch here. This is the mags for my PO7. I don't know who makes this pouch. It's kind of a crappy pouch. The DACA pouch is the way to go for the mags, in my opinion, but these are my, uh, my carry gun. This is the magazine loader that comes with a, I think it's called a Beta C mag. And you put five in at once on the AR mag, and you just do that, and it loads five, pull it out, throw five more in there, do that. When you're doing like enormous, you know, gun testing stuff and just, or just, you have to punch like a thousand rounds of mags or whatever. This thing is kind of a lifesaver for your fingers. So this thing lives in here at all times. Down here, I have some glow sticks for night matches and things like that. Or if I'm training, got a little IR one right there. But if I'm training at night or shooting at night or whatever, I might use these to mark or sometimes we have to wear these on our body at like some of the three gun matches and there are some nighttime pistol matches out there in this area as well. And I love shooting those matches because when do you get to shoot in the dark? Like ever. Um, so I really like shooting those matches but have these glow sticks on there. And then if you, if you shoot matches, you know what this is. If you don't, you don't. But this is what we use to clean our magazines. Every time I drop a magazine at a match in the dirt, it gets pulled apart and this thing goes through it a couple times, gets all the dirt and dust or grime or whatever might have gotten in there off. Then I put the magazine together and I reload the magazine. 
Sorry, the original OG brush was made by Ralph Arredondo. But this is a, I believe this is a double alpha one because on the back here, you can unscrew this little thing right here. And then in here, it has these little tool bits and it has a whole bunch of little Allen, Allen key heads and things like that on it. And then on the back of this is a small little magnet and you can put the tool right in there and you have a screwdriver or an Allen key or something like that. So I keep this thing kind of loaded. This was a cool, when I saw, I lost my Arredondo brush that I had forever in that bag that was stolen. But uh, when I replaced it, I replaced it with this double alpha one right here because I liked it a lot. And then last but not least, I always have a chamber flag for if I'm shooting PCC or if I'm in a rifle match or something like that. It's you have to have one of these and it's nice to have in a class setting too. So if you're done shooting or whatnot, I'll keep this in my back pocket. I just pull it out and throw it in the barrel. That way everybody kind of knows like, you know, that guy's gun isn't loaded. So um, always keep quite a few of these sitting at the bottom of this. So anyway, guys, that's my range bag. If you have any questions uh, on this gear, suggestions for videos, anything you guys want to see more of, uh, let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and please consider subscribing, guys. I really appreciate it and just keep the channel going. I'm not here to do this for money. I'm just doing this for fun and to share information. I get the question like, what's in your range bag? Weekly by friends. Now I can just tell all those friends, hey bro, go check out my YouTube channel. Like and subscribe guys, have a great day. God bless, boom. Hell yeah.